Let's start with the pointly from the month of June. Now, ITU2 is a grouping formed by four nations that is India, Israel, UAE and the US. The first summit of ITU2 nations will be held in a virtual mode in July 2022. Issues like food security and other cooperations will be discussed at the summit. The group members met for the first time under a new framework in October 2021. At that time, the grouping was called International Forum for Economic Cooperation. The ambassador of UAE to India has referred to the new grouping as West Asian Quad. Moving on to test of Agni-4 missiles. India has conducted a routine user training launch test of its nuclear-capable Agni-4 missile. Agni-4 is an intermediate-range ballistic missile. It has been developed by DRDO. It has a range of around 4,000 km. It can carry 1,000 kg payload and go as high as 900 km. The successful test reaffirms India's policy of having a minimum credible deterrence capability. So, minimum cre credible minimum deterrence is the principle on which India's nuclear strategy is based. It underlines no first-use principle with an assured second-strike capability and falls under the minimal deterrence as opposed to mutually assured destruction. Moving on to Prithvi-2 missile, the night trial of Prithvi-2 missile has been successfully conducted. It is a surface-to-surface -surface short range ballistic missile and it has been developed by DRDO under Integrated Guided Missile Development Program. Its range is 350 km. It is capable of carrying 500 to 1000 kg of warheads. The missile is capable of striking targets at a very high degree of precision. The missile is powered by liquid propulsion twin engines. The missile also uses, uses an advanced inertial guidance system with maneuvering trajectory to hit its target. Now, Astra MK-1 missile. The Astra MK-1 missile is a beyond visual range air-to-air -air missile. BVM missiles are capable of engaging beyond the range of 20 nautical miles or 37 kilometers. Air-to-air missiles are fired from an airborne asset to destroy an airborne target. It has been designed and de developed by DRDO for deployment on fighter jets like Sukhoi, 30 MKI and Tejas of the Indian Air Force and the MiG-29K of the Navy. Its range is 110 kilometers. The missile can travel at speeds more than four times that of sound. Air-to-air -air missiles with beyond visual range capability provide large Standoff range to fighter aircraft. This can neutralize adversary airborne assets without exposing themselves to adversary air defense measures. Standoff range means missile is launched at a distance sufficient to allow the attacking site to evade defensive fires from the target. Moving on to high mobility artillery rocket systems, that is HIMARS. The United States has announced that it is sending its high mobility artillery rocket systems known as HIMARS to Ukraine. It is a multiple launch rocket system, that is MLRS a mobile unit that can simultaneously launch multiple precision guided missiles. Moving on to exercise Khan Quest 2022. It is a multinational peacekeeping exercise hosted annually by Mongolian Armed Forces. The exercise saw participation from military contingents from 16 countries. India was one of the participating countries. Moving on to exercise Sampriti. It is a joint military exercise between India and Bangladesh. The exercise is hosted alternately by both countries. The aim is to strengthen the military relation between the two countries. Moving on to exercise Bongo Sagar. The third edition of Indian Navy and Bangladesh Navy bilateral exercise Bongo Sagar was held at Port Mongla, Bangladesh. It is a maritime exercise. Its first edition was held in 2019. Now, Wargame Research and Development Center is a first of its kind stimulation based training center in India that will use artificial intelligence to design virtual reality war games. The center will be used by the army to train its soldiers and train its strategies through metaverse enabled gameplay. Soldiers will test their skill in metaverse where the sur surroundings will be simulated using a combination of virtual reality and augmented reality. It will be developed by it will be developed by Gandhinagar based Rashtriya Raksha University. Now moving on to 5G testbed, the 5G testbed has been developed as a multi-institute collaborative project by five institutes led by IIT Madras. It will enable startups and industry players to test and validate their products locally and reduce dependence on foreign facilities. Now, Param Porul Supercomputer facility has been established under Phase 2 of National Supercomputing Mission at NIT Trichupalli with 838 teraflop supercomputing facility. The majority of the components used to build the system have been manufactured and assembled within the country, along with indigenous software stack developed by CDAC in line with Make in India initiative. The system is based on direct contact liquid cooling technology to obtain a high power usage effectiveness and thereby reducing the operational cost. Now, Param Anant. Param Anant supercomputing facility has been established under the phase two of national supercomputing mission at IIT Gandhi Nagar with 838 tera teraflops of supercomputing facility. It is also based on direct contact liquid cooling technology. With Param Anant, India now has 15 supercomputers with a combined performance capability of 24 petaflops. Now moving on to International Liquid Mirror Telescope. The International Liquid Mirror Telescope has been commissioned at Devsthal, Uttarakhand. It has been built by India, Belgium and Canada. It is located at an altitude of 24,250 meters at Devsthal Observatory Campus of Aribat Research Institute of Observational Sciences, Aries. It is the first liquid mirror telescope in the country and largest in Asia. Now, Balzars are supermassive black holes feeding on gas in the heart of very distant galaxies. They are among the most luminous and energetic objects in the universe. When the jet composed of ionized matter traveling at nearly the speed of light is pointed towards the observer, it is called Balzar. Now, killer asteroids are the asteroids that are capable of killing thousands of millions of humans if they are to hit the Earth. It does not necessarily mean that they are on a collision course for Earth. NASA has developed a tool that could help in identification of killer asteroids. 
The tools looks at older images stored in the digital archives at National Optical Infrared Astronomy Research Laboratory. The algorithm then identifies possible killer asteroids from over 68 billion dots of cosmic light showcased in the image. Thus, it helps to discover what has already been seen but not noticed. Moving on to West Nile virus, it is a mosquito-borne single-stranded RNA virus. It is a member of flavivirus genus and belongs to the Japanese encephalitis antigen complex of family Flavivaridae. Currently, virus is commonly found in Africa, Europe, Middle East, North America, West Asia. Now, Culex species of mosquitoes act as a principal vector of transmission. It is transmitted by infected mosquitoes between and among humans and animals, including birds, which are the reservoir host of virus. To date, no human-to-human -human transmission of West Nile virus through casual contact has been documented. A man in Thissur, that is Kerala, died recently due to West Nile virus. Now, monkeypox is a viral zoonotic disease, a disease that is transmitted from infected animals to humans that occurs primarily in tropical rainforest areas of Central and West Africa. It is occasionally exported to other regions. Monkeypox belongs to orthopoxovirus, same genus as that of virola virus, which causes smallpox. Human-to-human -human transmission is very limited. Transmission can be through contact with bodily fluids, lesions on the skin or internal mucal surfaces such as in mouth or throat, respiratory droplets and contaminated objects. There is no safe proven treatment for monkeypox yet. According to WHO, the proportion of patients who die has varied between 0 and 11% in documented cases and has been higher among young children. Moving on to First Mover Coalition, India has joined a private public partnership initiative called First Movers Coalition. It was launched by the President of USA in and the World Economic Forum at COP26 in Glasgow in November 2021. The aim of the initiative is to decarbonize heavy industries and long-distance transport sector that are responsible for 30% of the global emissions. Now, the target sectors include aluminium, aviation, chemicals, concrete, shipping, steel and trucking. Without any urgent progress on clean technology innovation, these sectors might witness over 50% of the global emissions by mid-century. Lifestyle for Environment, that is Life Movement. The Prime Minister has launched a global initiative that is Lifestyle for Environment, Life Movement. The idea of life was introduced by Prime Minister during the 26th United Nations Climate Change Conference of the Parties, 26th in Glasgow. 2021. Its aim is to promote an environment-conscious lifestyle that focuses on mindful and deliberate utilization instead of mindless and destructive consumption. It promotes a lifestyle that is in tune with the planet and does not harm it, and those who live in such a lifestyle are called pro-planet people. Now moving on to Sela Macau, a new species of old world monkey, that is Sela Macau, recorded from Arunachal Pradesh, has been named after the Sela Mountains Pass. Sela Macau belongs to the Sinica group species of Macau, but it differs from all other members of this group through attributes such as brown collar hair and muzzle, absence of chin whisker. The Sila Macau was geographically separated from Arunachal Macau by Sila Mountain Pass. This mountain pass acted as a barrier by restricting the migration of individuals of these two species for approximately 2 million years. Now, Sila Macau is a major cause of crop loss in West Kameng district of Arunachal Pradesh. Hence, it faces threat due to man-wildlife conflict. Kantur Giant Softshell Turtle Now, Kantur's Giant Softshell Turtle is commonly known as Asian Giant Softshell Turtle, Frog-Faced Softshell Turtle. It is a species of freshwater turtle in the family of Trinochidae. The turtle gets its name from Theodore Cantor, a Danish zoologist who worked for British India, East India Company. It extends its extend range from Malaysia to India. Its presence in India has been recorded only a dozen times in 20 years, with sightings being reported anecdotally from Odisha, Tamil Nadu and West Bengal. Its IUCN status is critically endangered. The turtle can grow up to a meter in length and weigh 100 kilograms. It is one of the few freshwater species which is at home in saline water too. The turtle inhabits inland rivers and is thought to keep to deep depths. Moving on to Poseidona, Australia's world's largest plant. It is known as ribbon weed and is, is a species of seagrass. It was discovered in the shallow waters of World Heritage Area of Shark Bay in Western Australia. The plant is estimated to be at least 4,500 years old. It stretches across 180 kilometers in length. The plant appears to be extremely resilient without successful flowering and seed production. This plant is unique from others as it has twice as many chromosomes as its relative. This makes it what scientists call a polypop, polyploid. Polyploid, instead of taking half-half genome from both parents, take 100% genome from each of their parent, something not unheard in the plants. Moving on to, just look at, uh, we'll just look at this infographic. It is a 4,500 year old plant spread over 20,000 football fields. The world's largest plant has been discovered off the west coast of Australia, which is a seagrass. The name is Posidonia Australis. The ribbon wheat, Posidonia Australis, has been discovered in Shark Bay by a group of researchers from Flinder University and the University of Western Africa, Australia. Now moving on to monkey spider. Monkey spiders are commonly found in European meadows. They have been reported for the first time in the country from Muthang range of Wynard Wildlife Sanctuary. Monkey spiders belong to the family of dwarf spiders under the genus Prosonodius. The male and female monkey spiders are typically 3mm and 4mm long respectively. Females build triangular webs in between dry tree twigs and feed on small insects while males prefer to hide beneath dry leaves. 
only six species of spider belonging to this genus have been identified from across the world so far. It is first reported of this genus from India, hence there might be more such findings in future. Moving on to Neeli Jheel as tourism, ecotourism hub, the government of Delhi has given permission to develop the area near Neeli Jheel in Asola Bhati Wildlife Sanctuary as an ecotourism hub. It is a large lake hidden in thick scrubs of Asola Bhati Wildlife Sanctuary. It will get a natural stepped seating facility, amphitheatre, selfie point, toilets, 3D animation exhibits and a parking. The bamboo and other eco-friendly products would also be used for beautification of the place. E-vehicles would be used to ferry a limited amount number of people inside the sanctuary. Now the area of Asola Bhati Wildlife Sanctuary is spread at 6,874 acres, which means approximately 7,000 acres. 5.16 hectares is the area of Neeli Jheel. Now some of the species that have been captured are leopards, palm civets, black naped hare, grey mongoose, rudy mongoose, striped hyena, porcupine, hog deer, black buck, spotted deer, wild boar and langur. Now moving on to Asola Bhati Wildlife Sanctuary, it is situated in South Delhi Ridges section of Aravali Ranges on the Delhi Haryana border. The sanctuary contains one of the last surviving remnants of Delhi Ridge Hill Range, its semi-arid forest habitat and its dependent wildlife. The sanctuary has 23 species of mammal, 252 bird species, 28 reptile species and 86 butterfly species. Animals cited here include leopard, jackals, palm civets, black naped hare, grey mongoose, rudy mongoose, striped hyena, porcupine, hog deer, black buck, spotted deer, wild boar and langur. Historical places around the sanctuary are Suraj Kund, Anangpur Dam, both in Haryana, Tughlaqabad Fort, Adilabad Ruins, both in Delhi, and Chhatarpur Temple in Delhi. Moving on to coal gasification, the Ministry of Coal has prepared a national mission document to achieve 100 million ton coal gasification by 2030. Now, coal gasification is a process in which coal is partially oxidized with air, oxygen, steam, or carbon dioxide to form a flue gas. This gas is then used instead of pipe natural gas, methane, and other for deriving energy. China has the biggest number of coal gasification projects in the world. 5% of China's total con coal consumption is from its gasifiers. It can be used in the production of electricity and making chemical products such as fertilizers. Now, coal gasification is one of the more water-intensive forms of energy production. There are concerns about water contamination, land subsidence, and disposing of the wastewater safely. Now, moving on to Jan Samarth's portal, the portal was launched by Prime Minister. It is a unique digital portal leaking 13 credit-linked government schemes on single platform. The platform will be an end-to-end -end delivery platform and more number of more people will come forward to avail loans because of the ease of compliance. The portal will help reduce turnaround time and facilitate faster sanctions of loan to beneficiary.